Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. That a boy. All of our guests today on this Tuesday, including Craig Button standing by, brought to you by the Bayside Ocean Front Resort located Oceanside in beautiful Parksville. The Bayside is one of Vancouver Island's premier getaway spots. Exciting additions to the Bayside, including their newly opened Bay Cafe, sourcing delicious local products and seasonal cocktail list in the Bayside restaurant, Rick. Book your oh. island getaway today at BaysideOceanFrontResort.com or call 250-248-8333. And don't forget to mention Donnie and Dolly for 10% off your nightly room Rate. We got all sorts of is it just me's regarding Videl Sassoon oh, shampoo. shampoo. And uh, maybe we'll get to those uh, later as we bring in TSN Scouting Director Craig Button. Craig, thanks for doing this. How are you, sir? I'm good. Do you remember those Vidal Sassoon commercials back we, in the day, Donnie? We, we just ran one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it, but I, I I could think of many that were run. <laughs> yeah. um, you remember it, of course, right? Look at that head of hair yeah. on you. you yeah, you, look at you. Yeah. Expert on shampoos. <laughs> Everybody remembers yeah. that. Hey, uh, it's good to get you on because um, a, a lot of us here in Vancouver weren't fans of, or aren't fans of the Philip Peronic deal that the Canucks made for a first and a second round pick last week. I believe you are. How come? Well, I mean, we talk about the, uh, and I am. So, so to answer your yep. question, I am a fan. So, and and so the way I look at it in, in multiple ways. So, we, we've talked about the Vancouver Canucks and the blue line and the construction of the blue line and how adding better defensemen that can play in your top two pairs is going to help the team. We 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 know that they have a good goaltender. Uh, we know that they have good forwards, but the blue line construction needed significant additions and upgrades. And, and you know, I use them. Ahead. And Philip Ronak is that. And so you, you look at trying to improve an area of your team. There's a cost to it. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you're getting a player that can that can play a lot of minutes, that can contribute offensively, and he clearly is a top two-pair defenseman. Whether he's a top pair or a top or a second pair defenseman doesn't matter. He he he's in that group, so there's a cost. So now I I, I know that the argument is as well. You're giving up you're giving up a, a, a potential lottery pick. Yeah, potentially. I, I don't see it. I don't think that uh, uh, the New York Islanders will be in the bottom eleven teams. So you, you you know you're giving up a first round draft pick that might help you in three years time, and you might be drafting a defenseman. You might not be, and you still continue to have the same problem. You don't have good enough defensemen. There's a cost to acquiring good defensemen. So, and then the last way that I look at this, if if I said to you, you trade Bo Horvat, who was who, who you know the decision was made that he wasn't going to come back, whether it's Bo or, or Vancouver or a combination of the both. And I said, we're going to trade Bo Horvat for Philip Ronick, Anthony Beauvillier, and Atu Ratu. Is that a bad trade? Because that's what it came down to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, a lot of people here would too say. Much, too, much, too much is put into these first-round draft picks that aren't top five, top ten. You know, the Vancouver Canucks just got a ninth overall draft pick, Vitaly Kraftsoft. Who, who was a good prospect, don't get me wrong. I'm not yep. diminishing the draft yep. or prospects. Like, they just got him for Will Lockwood in a seventh-round draft pick sometime in 2040. <laughs> like, let's be – so y if you want to improve your team, there's a cost to it. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that Philip Ronick is a significant upgrade. And, uh, you know, I hear about draft capital, draft capital, draft – okay, keep talking about draft capital. You need to improve your team. The Vancouver Canucks improved their team with Philip Ronick. Now and tomorrow. Okay, so how does he improve the team, Craig? To be honest, a lot of people, like myself, complained about this deal, but we really don't know a whole lot about him. What is he going to add to the Canucks? He hasn't played a game yet here. Well, he can play a lot of minutes, and, and he can contribute a lot of offense. He, he, he's competitive. He's smart. He takes pressure off of uh, uh, Quinn Hughes. You know, Quinn Hughes is their only offensive defenseman. I mean, that's the guy that runs everything offensively for them. So whether it be supporting the attack – whether it be on the power play, he's the guy. Well, now you got Philip Ronick. Now it opens up more opportunities. You got a puck mover that can get the puck out of your own zone, that can join the attack, that can beat the pressure, you know, not only with his skating, but with his puck play. 
And you you look at, they don't have, like after Quinn Hughes, they don't have anybody that's close to Philip Roth. So, again, you can talk about what the draft pick could potentially be that might help in three years' time, might help in three years' time. He helps right now in a significant area that's critically important to the Vancouver Canucks' success. So unless you want to burn it right to the ground and and that first-round draft pick, because if you're burning it to the ground, you're trading Quinn Hughes, you're trading Elias Pettersson, you're trading all those guys, and you're the Arizona Coyotes. And who the hell wants to be the Arizona Coyotes right now? The Arizona Coyotes don't even want to be the Arizona Coyotes. <laughs> uh, Craig, this is the month for uh, NCAA recruitment uh, teams all over players. Uh, you know, Canucks got the Aiden McDonough uh, situation coming down here in a week and a half. Jake Livingstone from Minnesota State, everyone's all over him. Let me ask you, Craig, if you are an advisor for one of these top NCAA uh, clients, what are you looking for and how do you pick a team and what team are you going for? Okay, so like, l- l- let me start off by saying it. I think that there is absolutely zero downside to signing any college free agent. First of all, you're getting an older player, a mature player. If you make the decision that that player can absolutely play in the American Hockey League, which all these players can, then a- there- there's no downside to signing them. It- it- it's worth every part of the reward. So, so now to answer your question, Rick, you know, you're looking if if you're an advisor of these players, I think there's a couple of things you're looking for. You're looking for opportunity. So yeah. I think that that goes without saying. But what does opportunity look like? You're looking at teams' depth charts. You're looking at teams and you're going, okay, they have an abundance of defensemen. So if, if, you're, if, if you're a young defenseman coming out of college and you're looking at Anaheim, all you see in Anaheim is all these young defensemen. Some of them are going to turn pro next year. Some of them are going to turn pro the year after. So while you might get an immediate opportunity – you, you, you know, you might run into a, in, in, into a, in, in, into a, a log jam, uh, yeah. you know, in, in that organization. So you're looking at the depth chart and, and, and you're trying to understand, OK, well, there's opportunity there. And, it's, and, 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 it, and it could be not just right now because there, there, there's a, a, a recruitment process, but there's also that opportunity going on. Because you have ability, you're older, they don't really have an abundance of players in that regard. And then number three, and I think one of the most important things, and, and this comes in, is what is the organization's uh, record of helping young players right. like this? That we're going to commit to you, you know, get an opportunity, right? You can, you, they, they can say, we're going to give you an opportunity. You can look at the depth chart and say, yeah, it looks good here. But you better look at the record of the organization. And that becomes really significant when you're advising these players. Yeah, and they sign you today, but then on July 1st, they sign another two, three defensemen. So it changes all the time. Hey, uh, Craig, yeah, I want to ask... Think about this, Rick. Just think about this real quick. So Nick Blankenberg, yeah. okay, who, who was at Michigan last year, so he, he, he was pursued very hard by Columbus and the Colorado Avalanche. That right. was a, I, like, 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 I know the advisor very well, and I, I talked to him about it. And he went through this process. And, and, and Nick, you know, was looking at Colorado and goes, oh, what a great opportunity. I could play with McCarr. What great players. But then he started to go, that opportunity isn't really there. That opportunity, right. you know, isn't like, you know, and I don't know how, like, it might be right now, but how much in the future. So he made his decision to go to Columbus. And, and so I, I just use him as a recent example of, of, of a college free agent that had to go through exactly that and, and, and a highly coveted college free agent. And I and I and I bring up Brogan Rafferty. I I, yeah. I and I Craig. I got to be honest with you. I don't think the la, the the last NCAA recruit that did something in the city. I think was uh, Ben Hutton, and that was that was a long time ago. Yeah, and and I'll, I'll, Rick, you know when I watched Brogan play in the American Hockey League, I I thought he was a like he was a good player. Never got I a chance. Just, Never got a chance and, here. And see, and and I think he deserved one. Right, I think he deserved one. I, I really thought he had problem. And and you know, it goes back to you know Cliff Fletcher, who learned under Sam Pollock. You know, always said you got to try out your own players and give them an opportunity to see what they can give you before you start moving them out or or, or, or saying they can't. And I, I agree with you, Rick. I don't think Brogan got that opportunity. And he certainly, when I watched him, I certainly pegged him as someone who was very deserving of that opportunity. You know, and, you know, people say, well, he hasn't made it yet. Okay, that's fine. But it, it, was he given that opportunity by the team that recruited him? I'm with you on that, that he wasn't. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stretch things here, and I, I apologize beforehand. All right, Craig. So um, 
Oilers beat the Sabres last night 3-2 in Buffalo. Connor McDavid, two goals. He now has a career best, 124 points. He gets there in Buffalo. In 2015, he was supposed to go to Buffalo. <laughs> they were cheering against the Sabres in, in Buffalo. They had a 20%, the best chance at landing Connor McDavid. They didn't. The Oilers get him. Where would Connor, McBee, Connor McDavid be if he was drafted by Buffalo? Well, I think he'd still be in the same place because he's he's so brilliant. I I think we have to ask ourselves where would Buffalo be with yeah. Connor McDavid, right? Like yeah. it, it's taken them it's taken them a little bit of time to get to where they wanted to get to. You know, it, it was interesting because the player they did draft, Jack Eichel, and you know, you you, you missed the lottery. Uh, you miss the first overall pick, and you don't go, oh, geez, okay, I guess we'll take Jack Eichel. And we know how that relationship ended, and, you know, we, we saw how the Ryan O'Reilly relationship ended. You know, I, I think when you end up in these types of scenarios, you know, you, you when you're not handled in the right way, and it wasn't handled in the right way by the Buffalo Sabres when they didn't get the first overall pick, and it led to a lot of challenges. I mean, Ryan O'Reilly says, I'm sick of losing, so they get mad at him for being sick of losing. and they try. Now, they did get Tage Thompson, so, you know, but I'm not so sure they get Tage Thompson if, 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 if Connor McDavid's there, because Ryan O'Reilly would probably be yeah. really excited and the team would be better. I, what I would say to you in, in a short answer, they, they probably don't get Rasmus Dahlin first overall. They probably yeah. don't get Owen Power first overall. So we can look at their team now and say, what would they look like with Connor McDavid? I don't think they'd be better. Hmm. So you see, it was a stretch. I was putting Craig on the spot, but on as always, spot. he handled <laughs> it perfectly. The best. And that's because back in the day, you used Videl uh, Sassoon Shampoo. <laughs> Thanks for this, Craig. Appreciate it. You're yeah. speechless. I, I might still be using. How do you know that I didn't just buy up a lot of product and still use it? Though? Because I'll tell you why. Because we found out how much Vidal Sassoon shampoo costs these days. Over it's 100, 100, bucks. 100 bucks. 100 bucks a bottle. Okay. Uh, well, I should have bought up a whole bunch of bottles yeah, and then sold it on the secondary market, but I missed uh, that boat. Then uh, you wouldn't have to deal with us every week. It'd be perfect. <laughs> Craig, thanks for this. I love dealing with you guys. Thanks. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it. Thanks, Craig. Appreciate it. Thanks. Craig Button, always fun. TSN uh, scouting director.